fishing, bonfires and s'mores, swimming, boating around. These are just some of the things that people think about when they think of lake homes. I've worked with tons of people who want in on the lake home action, but there are some really important factors that have to be considered before you take the plunge and buy a lake home for yourself. Stick with me and I'll share with you some of the hidden secrets that no one tells you about owning a lake home. Make sure to stick around and I have a bonus tip for you that could potentially save you tens of thousands of dollars. Imagine buying your dream lake home only to realize that you can't even have a boat with a motor on the lake. Some people don't know that you can't just do what you want in every lake. This is the first thing that no one tells you about buying a lake home. There are rules that the people using the lake have to follow. Where I live in Minnesota, we have two types of lakes. There are recreational lakes, which allow motorized watercraft like speedboats and jet skis and water ski boats. And then there are non-recreational lakes, which generally don't allow motorized watercraft. Depending on the lake, they might allow trolling motors for fishing boats, or they might only allow personal watercraft like kayaks, canoes, and stand-up paddle boards. It varies from lake to lake, so it is critical that you're working with a professional who is super familiar with the specific rules of each body of water so that you can avoid a total dumpster fire. Next, how are you planning to use your lake home? Is this going to be a primary residence or is it going to be a vacation home? Now, at the risk of sounding so obvious, have you checked to make sure you can do what you want with the home? Deed restrictions might prevent you from being able to put in new landscaping or build a boathouse or put up a storage shed, so it is really key to check any restrictive covenants that the neighborhood or association might have, but also to check with the city and not just assume that you'll be able to use the property the way that you want to. If you're buying a lake home to spend time at sometimes and then rent out as an Airbnb or VRBO the rest of the time, you might have to get a business license from the city or you might have a minimum rental time frame, or you might not be able to rent out the home for under a certain period of time. Where I live in Minnesota, the regulations change from city to city. There are some cities which don't allow rentals under 30 days and others which only allow a certain number of short-term rentals that are issued licenses such as only 25 short-term rentals in the entire city and others have no restrictions whatsoever. I'm connected with agents who specialize in lakefront property around the country so if you're looking for a lake home somewhere other than Minnesota or Wisconsin where I work make sure to reach out and I'll put you in contact with an experienced agent in the area you're looking to help you find your dream lake home. The third thing people don't talk about is that some lake homes are only seasonal. They aren't four season properties. They're more like cabins. They're closed down for the winter in the fall when it starts to get cold, the water's turned off, and the property is not even insulated for year round use. Now this might not be a consideration if you're looking to buy a lake house in Texas or Georgia or Florida or somewhere warm where there's not snow and ice, but plenty of lakefront property is located in the North, like Minnesota, Michigan, Montana, and Maine. So if you're planning to use your lake property as a winter base for ice fishing or snowmobiling, a seasonal cabin would be a huge bummer, especially if you're paying a lot of money for it. I live in Minnesota and in northern Minnesota, there are lakes that border Canada that are over a hundred miles long. And there are a lot of islands, which means there's also a good amount of lake homes that are on those islands. And they're only accessible by boat during the summer and fall when we still have open water before the ice is frozen. And then those same homes are only accessible during winter and spring by dry driving over the ice, either in a snowmobile or a four-wheeler or a car or truck. But the ice isn't always thick enough to drive over, so that means that even if the property is a year-round property, you won't be able to get out there for at least a couple of months during the fall when the ice is freezing, but it isn't yet thick enough to drive on, or for at least a month during the spring when the ice is melting and it's not yet thick enough to drive on, but it's not completely melted in open water yet either. Next, what is the actual lakeshore like? And is the lakeshore what you want? If it's overgrown with cattails or wild rice or lily pads, then the Department of Natural Resources or the DNR can regulate the removal of aquatic plants. So don't just assume that you can go in there and start blasting away. Some lakes don't even allow an aqua thruster or other aquatic tool that moves the water around and stops weeds from growing. And on some lakes, it's so strict, you're not even supposed to have a lake rake, which is a rake that you throw in the water and then you drag it back by pulling a rope and it helps rake the weeds off the bottom. And it's quite a tongue twister. Say that 10 times fast. Lake, rake, lake, rake, lake, rake. <laughs> If you see that the lakeshore of a lake home you're interested in isn't clear, it is so important to know what you can and can't do on that particular lake to clear or improve your shoreline. The last critical thing to consider is, is the property connected to city sewer and city water, or is it on well water and a septic system? Now, this is not the most fun thing to think about when we're thinking about lake 
take homes, but listen up because what I'm about to say could save you a ton of money. So many lake properties are on septic systems and if you don't make sure that the septic system is working and compliant before you buy your lake home, you could be liable for having to install a whole new septic system, which can cost anywhere between $15,000 and $40,000 plus, depending on where you're buying. Many counties where I live in Minnesota require the seller to have what's called septic compliance testing done prior to listing their home for sale. But there are plenty of places that do not require that compliance testing. You need to know what kind of septic system is in place, how often it was pumped, and to request pumping records. Let me share with you a little story about why it is so important that someone buying a lake home knows what's happening with the septic system. It might feel like I'm harping on about this, but listen up. At the risk of sounding repetitive, a lot of lake homes actually are on septic and they're not on city sewer. And if you buy a lake home in an area where the septic system isn't required to undergo that septic compliance testing without doing your proper due diligence, it can come back to bite you in the butt big time. So story time, I know someone who found a lake home in Minnesota, a friend of a friend, and they decided to work directly with the owner to buy it. The county it was in did not require that septic compliance testing, and this person didn't know anything about the requirements, so just assumed that the septic system was working fine and that the attorney who was handling the paperwork knew what to check for and would tell them what they needed to do for their due diligence. But real estate attorneys have a ton of responsibilities they cover in their role, so they may only facilitate the paperwork for real estate closings infrequently or rarely depending on where you live. And in Minnesota, where I live, attorney closings are very rare. So the attorney missed the due diligence for the septic system and so did the buyer. And they bought the lake home and had just finished getting their boxes unpacked and bought a couple of jet skis. And then they were notified that the septic system not only was not compliant, meaning it didn't meet the current county and standards, but it was considered to be an imminent threat to public health, meaning that the waste in the septic system was in danger of going where it really shouldn't be in this case and that they had just 90 days to fix it. And of course, they now owned the lake home and it was their financial responsibility. So they had to fork out an extra $34,000 of unexpected money to fix it. And the real kicker here is that if they had done their due diligence or worked with a good real estate agent who's well-versed in lake homes, septic install is typically a seller paid expense, or at the very least, if the seller isn't willing to pay for it, the cost can be rolled into the loan and financed so the buyer isn't out of pocket for it. If the property is not connected to city water and it's connected to a well, the well water should be tested as well and at a minimum for nitrates and coliform bacteria. If the well water isn't clean or safe for drinking, it needs to be treated and that's something you want to know before you buy your lake home. Comment below if you already own a lake home, what's been your experience with it or if you're just looking where you're looking to buy your lake place.